Hi everyone, it's Erin from EB Mix Media. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my Junk Journal January journal, which I finally was able to finish. Um, for some reason, it just seemed like a really long haul through January and I, I just fell behind and it just seemed to take me a while to catch up. I feel like I've lost my art mojo a little bit this past month, um, hoping to get that back. Um, we'll see. <laughs> I'm in a little slump. Any advice for slumps? I'd appreciate hearing it. It's kind of the first time I've ever felt this way. Uh, but anyway, so I finally got this finished. I'm excited how it turned out. If you're unfamiliar with Junk Journal January, it's a month-long challenge that takes place every January. It's hosted by Meg Journals, um, and she does it in collaboration with Get Messy Art. Um, so you can find Meg at, at Meg Journals, and Get Messy Art is obviously at Get Messy Art. So first I have to give a shout out to Tracy Wozniak at More Than Marmalade. She was the one that posted her journal and it had these handles. And I thought the handles were just so flippin' cute that I had to copy her. So I did, I shamelessly copied her. I had already created my journal, so I took a shopping bag and cut the handles off. And then after I open it up, I'll show you, I glued them down in between these two pages. So. Um, I owe her a lot of kudos for that because I just think it's so cute. It's like a little purse. Uh, this is a shirt, uh, from my husband. This is the, um, you know, where you button down the front of the shirt. So I cut that up and I stitched it on the back here and added the button and made a little closure on my little purse. This, this little embellishment here, I have a video that shows how I made those. If you want to check that out, um, I do have that on my YouTube channel. All right, let's open this up. So here you can see, I just glued the shopping bag handle in and then put another piece of paper on top. The paper that I've used to cover my um, cover was under paper, I believe. Um, and I added a few stencils to it to jazz it up a little bit, but I really liked the subtle effect of those colors on the paper. And as far as, um, sewing in my signature all i did was tie it it is just tied in uh, so that you could conceivably pull um pull a page out and work on it which i didn't end up doing all right let's get started so the first day was resolutions and um because it started the first of january and my resolution for the year is or my word for the year is action so um this was a little cluster made in fodder school and I just added the words take action and this uh, was also made in fodder school this washi tape that's a kind of a snippet roll washi tape and that was in Ricky Ticky Tabby's class. The second prompt was quote um, and I just liked that quote. <laughs> it's never too late to be who you might have been George Eliot. So take action move forward it's not too late. This was throwback and I was kind of struggling with what to do with this. This page already had these hexagons on it so I kind of carried that over and I just happened to have a Rolodex on my desk. I do some of these Rolodex cards for fun and I thought that's kind of a throwback to the days when we had to collect addresses and keep them in an address book or some sort of um, Rolodex and we would exchange business cards and things like that. So. That was my idea for throwback. Tuck spot was just creating a little pocket here. Uh, you can see how the pages wiggle around a lot. And I had this little tag I had made a while back. And so I just created a little tuck spot to put that in. I like finding places, finding homes for things in my journals. The next was a daily log. And this page was already in the journal, not with the words, but it was a, a, a paper I received from the Painted Paper Pals. So I just sort of copied what was on this page over here and it worked out perfectly for, you know, a schedule. So this was a daily log of really, this would be my best life <laughs> if I had, was able to do this. Wake, eat, art, eat, art, sleep. This is memory and this is just a photo of my dad when he was in the service in the 1950s and he passed away in 2023. So um, just remembering him. Stitched was this prompt. And again, this was the page that was already in the journal. So I took that motif and translated into some slow stitching 
here. I, I guess that's slow stitching, embroidery, whatever it is. It took me quite a while to do this page, but I really did kind of enjoy it. I remember sitting by the fire and doing that a lot. And then a floral here just to tie it all together. This, the prompt was neutral. Here's another little cluster from Ricky's class in fodder school. Um, the page, these were the pages, so they weren't particularly neutral. So the challenge was to kind of tie it, take this green and sort of make it a neutral and make it work with neutrals. The prompt for this was foliage. And I had a lot of these greens on this page that were already there. So I added a stencil to suggest leaves. And then I went through my stash and found I had these old stickers that were given to me in some happy mail and they kind of have jungle um jungle themes and a lot of foliage and i don't know forest like and then i had this assemblage that we made in fodder school with um megan quinlan and um, i had created that on this paint chip and it all just seemed to go together so i just glued that right in and it fit nicely and tied in i need to glue these down the stickers aren't really holding very well Okay, the next was layered, and that was this one. And um, I layered a lot of stencils, but then I also, this is a piece of tissue paper that has some modeling paste stenciled onto it. And then I built up some layers of collage and added this um, little uh, cluster, which is layered in and of itself. So that was my idea of layers, was just putting a lot on one on top of the other. The next page was eclectic and I kind of struggled with this. Um, this was a tag I had uh, that was just sitting around and the background was this marbled paper which was slightly challenging to work with and so I don't know I just started throwing stuff at it. I thought these numbers didn't really make sense. Nothing made sense and I started stringing these things together and that was my idea for eclectic. <laughs> just kind of throwing stuff down, grabbing different things that seemingly didn't relate to each other and sticking them together and trying to make it work. That's that one. Uh, this was torn edge. So this book page edge was torn. And then I tried to make sure everything I put down was torn as well. Um, there's some drywall tape there, features of floral that I made. Torn edges. Garden, um, which was easy for me. I pulled out some of my daisy florals and made an extra one i think i had to make one to make this work but um that's that one my daisies you can see how to make those in my fabulous florals class uh what's next pattern so with this one i just tried to pick papers with patterns on it and add patterns to the page um someone said this looked like fireworks which i think it kind of does um which is kind of cool uh, once after pattern opposites so this is my page for opposites and um, I just painted this page black this was already this kind of white really nice pressed paper and added the stencil and kind of tried to flip the look I like that one flow I kept this one pretty simple um, just threw some watercolor down and um, added the words, let it come, let it go, let it flow, and a, another floral. This was whimsical. Whenever I hear the word whimsical, I think of these florals. These are florals that you can also find in my Fabulous Florals class. Um, and I thought they went nicely with this background that was just kind of a master sheet that I cut into bits. Borders, this, uh, if you like this background, I have a free printable on my Teachable site that you're welcome to download that's very similar to this background. And I thought it just kind of looked like a winter wonderland. I carved this tree stamp ages ago and had these trees in my stash. So I just added a border to this kind of picture. I think this could have worked for Whimsical too. The next was interactive and I spent forever on this. I, <laughs> I really overthought it. Um, there was just paint slotches on this page from, I think, other pages that I'd done. So what I did was created a, an interactive by creating a pocket with this transparent, um, a transparent pouch, um, and then made, and then there's another actual pocket in here that's holding other flowers. So it's interactive and in that you can switch out your florals, um, and add a different look 
to your page. Let me see if I can get it in there very easily. And I thought having the little tab made it a lot easier to get them in and out instead of trying to just stick your hand in there, but you wouldn't really need the tab. And then there's that one. That was fun. With those cute idea. It did take me forever to kind of figure it out. <laughs> Sometimes I can't. I'm not very smart there. <laughs> so yeah, that's that one. That was fun. Got to use a lot of my florals there. Um, this one was okay. I think I was in a bit of a hurry. What was the pattern here? Nature. Um, so, you know, there's not much to this. Just uh, some stencils that look like greenery and adding a butterfly or two. Peeking out. This is, I just used a couple of these Tim Holtz cutouts and had the little guy peeking out from the other guy. This was that marbled paper again, and I was able to kind of try and ma match it on this page. I love these colors together, though. I think that's really, really beautiful colors. So I was really happy with this part. Uh, what was next? Bookshelf. I struggled with this a little bit, and then I um, just happened to have this book, which is the Pulitzer Prize winning book, A Spool of Blue Thread. I think it's by Ann Taylor. Um, and so I thought, I'll just showcase that book, and I have a bunch of blue thread. And once again, these colors kind of match what was on the page before, and I really like that. And this was the page I had to work with on this side. Uh, texture. So this one, yeah, I just added a lot of texture. This page here is textured. It's got a lot of heavy paint through the stencil. I added more heavy paint with circles. And then I've got some burlap, some lace, a tea bag with the edging on it, some threads there. So just a lot of texture. These are colors I wouldn't normally work with. They were what were on the page, but that worked out. Um, what's next? Texture. Fabric. For this one, again, this is where I found myself, I just kind of found myself losing interest and having, really struggling with these prompts and being creative and getting up in my art room. So for this, I just did a simple fabric, fabric collage. And these are dress shirts of my husband's. And, um, he goes through dress shirts like nobody's business. But, uh, I save them and use them, so... Uh, this one was ombre, so I kind of did an ombre pattern across here. I'm not thrilled with how this turned out, and I don't know how these drops are reading on the camera, but they're orange. I, when I took a photo, it looked like red blood drops, and I didn't like that look, but did the gold flowers, and it was okay. I'm, it's not my, I'm not thrilled with that one. Translucent, here I used a piece of this Duralar, um, to, so you can actually see through it to the design in the back. Um, lyrics. This was another, you saw this page earlier that was already like this, and I just carried it over and looked for lyrics that would fit those boxes. And that's a Taylor Swift song. It was funny, too, because I, I did that one on Super Bowl Sunday when everything, you know, she was at the Super Bowl with her boyfriend and blah, blah, blah. So it was kind of funny. Or no, was it that day or was it the day she won? I think it was the day she won the Grammy. I can't remember. Whatever. I, I'm a Swifty. Okay, what's next? Um... Grungy. This is my grungy one. I just really mucked it up with a lot of black ink and water and just threw all kinds of things on the page. This pattern paper was already underneath it with that design. So I added this cool bread tag that um, my friend Jackie sent me in the mail and she um, painted it that hot pink. So I think that's fun against the grunge. This is geometric. I did not like how this turned out at all. I It just wasn't I was shocked when I turned the page and saw, again, these hexagons and the prompt was geometric and I got really excited. I had a lot of bleed through from using all the water on the previous page, but it just didn't, I don't know, just didn't turn out the way I liked it. So I had a ton of these butterflies. I taught a class and had a bunch of these butterflies left over. So used those. Again, just feeling like I lost my mojo. Got it back a little bit on this page. Um, this prompt here was travel and I had this photo and I always remembered seeing this in the Tim Holtz chat or whatever, I don't know what it's called, but the sentiment collection. And that just fits so perfectly. And I had this little ticket from some trailways. And then I have a stencil that I think looks a lot like road signs. So I just started putting different cities all over the world, kind of bucket list for me, uh, places. And so I kind of liked how that one turned out. And then for the last one, I confess, I really didn't do much. I had made this tag before, 
um, and the prompt was reflect. And lately, again, I'm trying to take a lot of action, but I'm also really trying to appreciate today. I just am feeling like life is so short and I'm so grateful and I just want to really appreciate each day and take advantage of it and not take it for granted and take action, get as much done, move forward as much as I can. The time is now and there's no time like the present to get reach your goals and get things done. So that's my journal. Um, I do really think it's, I love the handles. I love how it's like a purse. I was really pleased with how it turned out. The button is a little hard to get done. Well, no, that wasn't too bad. Yeah, but um, but love, love the look of it. And um, enjoyed doing the prompts though towards the end, I was getting kind of not burnt out on the actual challenge, just, you know, in a funk. So, Anyway, hope you enjoyed that, and I'll be back hopefully again soon with something new. Um, until then, we'll see you. I will be on Instagram. You can find me there at Aaron, or sorry, EB Mixed Media, EB underscore Mixed Media. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.